Hi everyone. As some of my students requested for lectures on differential equations, here we are. But before we begin solving them, let's look at some basic concepts. In this video, we will understand what are differential equations, both the ordinary differential equations and the partial differential equations, what are differential coefficients, what is a general solution, what's a particular solution, and how are differential equations formed. For explanation purpose, everywhere examples have been used. So let's begin. Let's say we are given an equation y square is equal to 4ax and we differentiate this with respect to x. So what will we get? 2y dy by dx is equal to 4a. Now if you cancel 2, you are left with y dy by dx is equal to 2a. As an end result, what do we have? A differential equation. So this is called a differential equation. Let's differentiate it once again. Now there are two parts here, y and the other part is dy by dx. So when we differentiate once again, we will use differentiation by parts. So let's differentiate. Differential of the first part, which is dy by dx, into the second, which is also dy by dx. So we get dy by dx whole square. Plus first part as it is, differential of the second. When we differentiate the second part, it is nothing but d by dx of dy by dx, which we write as d2y by dx square. And right hand side will be 0. So we again land up with a differential equation. If we keep on differentiating, we will be getting many more differential equations. In the terms which we came across in these differential equations were d2y by dx square, dy by dx. So what are they called? They are nothing but the differential coefficients. Here, x is the independent variable and y is always called the dependent variable. Now, this comes to our mind all the time. Where do differential equations occur? They occur in many branches of mathematics, physics, chemistry, and during your course of engineering, you'll find them at many places. We can find them in velocity of chemical reactions, oscillations of a pendulum, electric, circuits, etc. Here I've listed some examples of differential equations. So you see each one of them is different from the other. First one is dy by dx is 4. Second one is d2y by dx square plus 2y is equal to 0. The third one has an extra term 3 dy by dx whole square. And in the fourth one you see it is d3y by dx cube plus 4, d2y by dx square minus dy by dx plus 9y is equal to e to the power x. The fifth one has an under root sign. The sixth one has this symbol. You call it do or del, whatever way you pronounce. So in the sixth one, we have that. And in the last one, you see we have dy by dx whole square. Now, we will come back to these equations once we understand what is the order and degree of a differential equation. So, we'll first define order of a differential equation. Now, order is the highest number of times your dependent variable is differentiated. Dependent variable was y for us. Independent variable was x. So, in the Examples which we had, see, y, the dependent variable, has been differentiated only once with respect to the independent variable x. So, the order of this differential equation will be 1. Here, the highest number of times you've differentiated is 2. So, the order of this differential equation is 2. Come to the fourth one. Here, we have differentiated Three times. That's the highest number of times you've differentiated. So that's the order of this differential equation. We'll come back to 5 later on. 
come to example 7. Highest number of times you have differentiated is only once. So, the order of this equation is also 1. Now, let's define degree of a differential equation. The power of the highest differential coefficient is called the degree of the differential equation. So, let's go back here. Your highest differential coefficient is divided by dx. And what is the power? Power is 1. So, the order of this differential equation is 1 and the degree is 1. Come to this. Highest number of times you have differentiated is 2. So, the order is 2. But the degree is 1 because its power is 1. Come to example 3. Now, here we have both the terms. See, d2y by dx square plus 3 dy by dx whole square. So, you might get confused that the degree and order both are two, but just see the differential coefficient is the highest number of times you have differentiated y is two. So the power of this term is one, hence the degree is one. And again in example four, order is three, degree is one. Here in example seven, the order is 1, but degree is 2. Now, how do we handle question number 5? For such problems, before we decide on the degree and order, we need to get rid of the under root sign. So, we will square both the sides and then decide on the degree. We will come back uh, to this later on. So, here... The same thing has been given. Now, what are ordinary differential equations? So, differential equations which involve only one independent variable. In all our uh, problems, if you see from 1 to 5 and the last one, the seventh one, only one independent variable x was there. All these equations are ordinary differential equations except for question number 6. In question number 6, you see, we'll go back to the example. In question number 6, see, there are two independent variables, x and z. So, we have used partial derivatives here. And hence, we call such differential equations as partial differential equations. So, how do we define? We say, Differential equations where more than one independent variable is there, we call them partial differential equations. In short, we write ordinary differential equations as ODE and partial differential equations as PDE. Now, coming to question number 6. As I said, we take the square on both the sides. So, if you take the square on both the sides, you will get d2y by dx square whole square is equal to 1 plus dy by dx. So, now what will be the order of such a differential equation? Order will be 2 and so will be the degree. Degree will also be 2. How are differential equations formed? So, one way these equations are formed are by eliminating constants if they are there in your equation. Let's say we are given an equation y is equal to a e to the power 2x. Now, we want to get rid of a. We will differentiate this equation with respect to x. So, left hand side will be dy by dx and right hand side will be a which was a constant. So, we just keep it as it is 2 times e to the power 2x. If I replace a from my original equation, a will be nothing but y into e to the power minus 2x. I am taking e to the power 2x on the other side. And if we write it here, what will we get? We will get dy by dx is equal to 2 y, is y e to the power minus 2x which is our a. So, a has been replaced by this into e to the power 2x. So, 
here we are left with only 2y. What have we got? We've got a differential equation. So many a times differential equations are formed when we eliminate the constant occurring in the equation. Let's look at another example. y is equal to a e to the power 3x plus b e to the power minus 3x. Now we want to get rid of two unknowns here, a and b. In the previous example, we had only one constant. Here we have two of them. We will be differentiating twice to get rid of these constants a and b. First differential gives us dy by dx is equal to 3a e to the power 3x minus 3b e to the power minus 3x. Differentiate it once again, you will get d2y by dx square, which is 9a e to the power 3x and this will become 9b e to the power minus 3x. If you pull out the 9, you are left with a e to the power 3x plus b e to the power minus 3x, which is nothing but y. So we replace this term by y and we get d2y by dx square is equal to 9y. We have a differential equation in this whole process. What are solutions? What is a general solution and what is a particular solution? Now, if a function y is equal to gx, so we have taken some function of x. If y and its derivative, they satisfy a given differential equation, then y will be called its solution. Then what is a general solution? A solution is called a general solution if it involves some constant terms. It may still satisfy the differential equation, but it has a constant term with it. If not, then we call it a particular solution. Let's look at an example. You are given dy by dx plus 2y is equal to 0. Let's take y is equal to e to the power minus 2x. If I differentiate this y is equal to e to the power minus 2x, we'll get dy by dx is minus 2 e to the power minus 2x. So we'll substitute dy by dx and y in our differential equation. So what will we get? We wrote dy by dx as e to the power minus minus 2 e to the power minus 2x and plus 2 times y value which was this. We see right hand side is 0 so our differential equation is satisfied. We will say that y is equal to e to the power minus 2x is a solution. As there is no constant term, what will we call it? It will be called a particular solution. Now let's look at this equation. dy by dx plus 2x is equal to 0. It's the same equation which we... Uh, no, it's different. We have 2x here. So dy by dx plus 2x is equal to 0. Let's take y is equal to minus x square plus c. And we will check whether this is a solution of our differential equation or not. So now the solution has a constant term c. If it satisfies, it will be called a general solution. Let's differentiate this. So when we differentiate, we'll get dy by dx is minus 2x and this will be 0. Let's substitute. On substituting, you'll see you get a 0. So y is equal to minus x square plus c is a general solution of our example. Sometimes we are given some conditions. And by using those conditions, we can find the value of the constant. Then the solution is called a particular solution. Let's look at example 5. We are asked to solve dy by dx plus 2x is equal to 0. We are given a condition y at 0 is equal to 1. Which means x value is 0. So whenever x is 0, y becomes 1. We have to find the particular solution. So you see, we will 
we are given dy by dx is equal to minus 2x. We have just taken this 2x on the other side. So we get dy is equal to minus 2x dx. Now integrate both the sides. On left hand side we will get y and on the right hand side we will get minus 2x square by 2. If you cancel 2 you are left with minus x square plus a constant of integration. We are given a condition that at x is equal to 0, y becomes 1. So when I put x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1, gives us c is equal to 1. If I substitute this value of c here, my solution will become y is equal to minus x square plus 1 and this will be a particular solution. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we will be coming to straightaway solving differential equations. We will be using different methods for solving the equations. Thank you for watching.